All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to uh, call to order our meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum. Um, at this time, will you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? All right. Um, at this time, there are no uh, public comments. Um, looking at item 1.4. Uh, would someone like to make a motion uh, for the approval of the minutes? I'm just trying to see who. Uh, for those of you who are at home, I'm happy to see you uh, join us. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure that a few more people actually get a chance to speak with their microphones that are here in the room. So. I believe that, that, that uh, Sherry Smith attempted to make a motion yes. for the minutes. So move. All right, and uh, is there a second? I'll second, Nancy. Nancy, thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, would any other uh, discussions or comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor, please uh, say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Uh, for the next item of 1.5, correspondence announcements and common council reports, uh, I just wanted to uh, share with you that um, those of you who have been on the board this past year, this tends to be an item that takes less than, you know, 20 seconds. But today I actually have something under each category of correspondence announcements and common council reports. So uh, bear with me as I go through uh, several uh, uh, good information. Uh, number one, I just wanted to share and uh, with all of you and those of you who are at home, uh, you're just going to have to come to the library and actually see this lovely card. But we did receive a very lovely uh, thank you card uh, to the board and it is from our Mead Public Library staff. And it states, uh, thank you for your thoughtful acknowledgement of National Library Week. It's wonderful to have such support from our board members. Kind regards, Mead Public Library staff. So I just wanted to share that uh, piece of correspondence. Um, the next item that I wanted to also mention is that it's not very often uh, that we actually get to have a board meeting on Earth Day. So I just wanted to say happy Earth Day and I'm very disappointed that we're not able to do this meeting outside. We should be around a tree and we should be celebrating this incredible earth. And uh, so happy Earth Day to all of you and everyone in uh, the city of Sheboygan, the county of Sheboygan, uh, state of Wisconsin, the United States, North America, and the whole world. And for those of you who want to learn more about Earth Day and how you can actually leave behind an earth uh, even better for the next generation, I strongly urge you to come to Mead Public Library and get check out some wonderful resources on how you can really make a difference in your community. Uh, next, I wanted to uh, make uh, the uh, official announcement uh, that in light of our uh, most recent uh, local election, uh, all of us here on the board would like to wish former Mayor Mike Vandersteen a very happy retirement. Um, he was actually the fourth mayor that I've had the opportunity to work with while being on the library board. And he was uh, very supportive of our library and he worked with me on getting some great appointments of citizens to our library board. So our best wishes are to him. Uh, and in light of this recent election, I would also like to congratulate on behalf of all of us, uh, Ryan Sorensen as our new mayor of the city of Sheboygan. We look forward to working with him along with the new alders of Gracia Perella and Amanda Salazar, as well as the re-election of alders Barb Feldy, Roberta Felicki-Paneski, Marcus Savaglio, and Trey Mitchell. 
uh, congratulations to all of them on behalf of our library board. And then the final piece of um, the uh, announcements is I just wanted to remind all of you that uh, your, if you are in the final cycle of your three-year term, this will be your last meeting unless you are um, interested in being reappointed to the library board. If so, after this meeting, please get in touch with me so that I can share with you the process by which you can communicate those wishes with our new mayor. Um, and um, I also wanted to let you know that in the month of May, for those of you who are relatively new to our board, in the month of May at our meeting, we actually have our own election where we determine the new president and vice president as well as an opportunity to share uh, which new committees uh, you will become part of in this uh, upcoming year. So I think that is it for all of my correspondence announcements and Common Council reports. And I'm just going to look over at Library Director Garrett Erickson to see if there's anything I've forgotten. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, at this time, uh, under uh, 1.6, um, we are going to be adopting a resolution in honor of the service of Kyle Welton as Mead Public Library trustee. He communicated with us uh, last month when we did not have a library meeting that uh, he needed to step down uh, from his term, uh, primarily due to the uh, uh, work uh, uh, load that he has in his new professional endeavors. And so, uh, in working with uh, Garrett Erickson, we have put together a uh, resolution in honor of him. So at this time, I'm not too sure if this resolution had an opportunity to be shared on board docs, but I am going to share it with all of you now, and then uh, it will be shared with you, and uh, uh, Kyle uh, will have an opportunity to uh, uh, receive this uh, resolution. So. A resolution in recognition of the service of Kyle Welton to Mead Public Library. Whereas Kyle Welton was first appointed to the library board by Sheboygan Mayor Mike Vandersteen in April 2017. Whereas Kyle Welton participated diligently as the finance committee chairperson. Whereas Kyle Welton helped guide the library through the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas Kyle Welton was an advocate for Mead Public Library's vision of creating a vibrant, informed, and cohesive community. Whereas Kyle Welton served as a model for the conduct of the responsibilities of a library trustee in a well-informed and reasoned manner. When, well, <coughs> excuse me. Well, and uh, whereas what, what <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> And whereas Kyle Welton took seriously his responsibilities as a board member and worked conscientiously for the benefit of the citizens of Sheboygan. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mead Public Library Board does hereby publicly commend Kyle Welton for the time and attention he so generously devoted to his responsibilities as a trustee. The board thanks him for his commitment in serving as Mead Public Library trustee and recognizes his service through the designation of appropriate book titles for purchase in his honor. The Mead Public Library wishes him all the best following his service to the Sheboygan residents as a library trustee. Dated 22nd day of April, 2021. So at this time, would someone like to take a motion to uh, approve this resolution? All right, Kathy Norman. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Kathy Norman has made the motion, and I believe, was that Chris who seconded? Yep. Second. Thank you. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. And as uh, the tradition that uh, was started a few years ago, um, I did actually uh, purchase a couple of books uh, as a thank you from all of us to Kyle. But with you know COVID, it was kind of challenging get it, to get books to come to the little local bookstore in Plymouth, Bookheads. So <laughs> there's a couple of titles that are not here, but I did want to share the two that are here. Uh, so I thought it was most appropriate, really for anyone on a board, 
Amanda Gorman's wonderful poem, The Hill We Climb. So I thought he mm. would really appreciate her inaugural poem for our whole country. And then because I was thinking of poetry, I thought, well, we have to pick something of our own Sheboygan poet laureate, Lisa Vijos. So I am including also this wonderful book, Van Gogh Dreams, because, you know, maybe Kyle will have more time to actually dream if he doesn't also have the responsibilities of the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees. So uh, these two will be going to him, and then um, once the other books come in, I will let you know uh, what, uh, what uh, he will be receiving. One has to do with the travel book, so you can tell that, you know, I think we're hoping that in this this year and the next year, we can actually plan for a little bit of travel. So, all right. Uh, with that, um, we will move on then to um, committee reports and uh, 2.1, review and possible action on payment of current expenditures, including payroll, special revenues, grants, gifts, and donations. And I'm just gonna turn that over to uh, Garrett Erickson to see if there are any additional highlights that we should be aware of. Now we're just trying to see if we can there get it is. right there. Yep, go. I'm on. Thank you. This okay, is just one on. technology just really, it's flashing, so. <laughs> Take that one off. There it is, Maeve. Uh, Debbie did send out the information for um, the, the section on Monday. I guess I would open it up to Debbie if you had anything else to add or if there was questions from anyone. Um, no, there weren't any um, donations this month, and you did receive the 2020 fiscal year end, and that is the final one unless the auditors would find something, but I believe it's going to be the final one because they haven't asked me any questions, and I believe the audit's almost done. And then the 2021, that is through March, so um, if you have any questions on any of it, it's about where we should be after three months, so... I guess my only uh, question was that um, you had referenced to all of us that if there was any account that was at 100% or over, it's because of the way the finance department is, is, is not posting some things that are reoccurring. And I was just curious, just for my own understanding, is that, is, do you think that is gonna be the, the new way that the report is gonna be shared or Will we be going back to the old way? I just need to make sure I'm reading the reports correctly every month. Yeah. I'm so used yeah. to that 100%. That helps me feel like we're moving carefully through our monies throughout the year. Yeah, and actually, I would prefer it to be billed out every month, but the finance department is going to bill it out as a cash um, instead of like an accrual type uh, accounting. So like the parking expense, which we always did get billed at, one time, but the IT now used to be billed out monthly. That is gonna be the one year expense right off the bat. And a few of the others where you see that 100% and I do not foresee that changing with the new personnel. And I think also the city administrator uh, talked it over with um, their interim finance director and that is gonna be the route they're gonna go. Um, you know, it, I could take those contracts, you know, some of those contracts we get billed in January and I could manually do them on a spreadsheet and then put them on, but I would prefer not to do that. I would like to just show the actual that's on our year-to-date budget. All right, uh, well, thank you, Nancy. Uh, uh, excuse me, Debbie. I was just seeing yep. Nancy's, uh, I thought Nancy was waving her hand. Um, so, uh, if this is the case, it might be helpful at one of our next meetings to maybe we could just have a quick little review of, of what, what items should we be looking at um, and that maybe could be something we could do at a future finance committee meeting and that information can be shared then with the whole board uh, just to help sure. us making sure that we're looking at we need to be looking at and that way we're not asking you the same question every month. <laughs> <laughs> yep. it would be good and you'll also to notice that the tax levy is not on the statement and right. I did check on that and I was told that the auditors have told them not to post that until August after the July 30th tax collection. So I, what I will do is I will manually put that in there. Otherwise, it is going to make us look like we're way over budget every month until August. 
And we all know how Debbie pays attention to any penny that is over budget. So we know <laughs> it is harder for her to see that than perhaps all of us. But uh, th yeah. that's very good to know, too. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question or comment? Would someone like to take a uh, make a motion to uh, uh, take action on this item? Someone like to move approval? Okay. Uh, whoops. Sorry, Kathy. <laughs> You're muted. Well, Kathy Norman did okay. say <laughs> so moved. Is there a second? I I think Nancy is trying to say second. You wanted to do a two? Oh, <laughs> I think she was muted. So I am I'm no longer muted, and and I will second. All right, terrific. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Terrific. Uh, next is 2.2, .2, the 2021 budget status report. And I'm turning Debbie. it over again to Garrett Erickson. And I will delegate to Debbie anything. <laughs> I, I included that in with the last conversation. Yeah. The right. 2021, we don't. I guess, is there any questions on the report? I think it all looks uh, 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 as it normally does. So along with the additions and the clarifications you made earlier. So thank you, Debbie. I think we can now move on then to 3.1, um, which is, uh, Foundation mini golf event. Yeah, thanks, Maeve. So um, on this one, most people knew that the uh, uh, Pro Golfer Association um, Ryder Cup was scheduled for the fall and unfortunately got delayed due to COVID. Um, during, boy, the first six months of last year, we were planning a big event for the foundation. It was going to be a fundraiser where we had uh, opened up the library on a Sunday. And of course, Sundays during the summer were closed. Uh, and we planned on having uh, mini golf over the course of a weekend. One day would be for families and one day would be just for adults. Unfortunately, we of course had to uh, postpone that. And now uh, the, the Ryder Cup has been rescheduled here in September in Kohler at Whistling Straits, uh, the weekend of September 24th through the 26th. Um, and so the foundation is wondering, I guess they're, they're still kind of going back and forth on whether to have an event. Um, things are starting to open up, but they really haven't been clearly opened by the CDC or State Health Department. And we would expect that we would have quite a few people in the building. So I thought I would bring that up to the attention of the, of the trustees to kind of discuss whether they would want to do something or maybe delay it. Um, and I just wanted to have a discussion today and kind of open that up and we could give some feedback to the foundation on that. So um, I'll, I'll share my thoughts first because I've uh, talked with uh, Garrett about this. Um, my inclination is that as much as I love, love, love the idea of the foundation trying to create a fun fundraising event for the library in our library space, I just think that this year is a little too challenging with our challenges of COVID-19 to have a, an event inside our library that involves eating and drinking, uh, you know, uh, and, and doing the mini golf and socializing and do all, doing all the things that we enjoy doing, having almost like a different behavior protocol for a social event when, when we're open for the public. <laughs> um, normally, we have a very careful uh, expectation of how people should conduct themselves and staying further apart and wearing a mask. I just think it sends uh, the wrong message, even though I am so intrigued by this idea and it's one that I'd like the foundation to kind of put in their back pocket and maybe we can revisit this in two or three years. And it's my guess that, you know, we're going to have some pretty amazing golf championships in, in Sheboygan County. <laughs> in the next few years. And I know the tie-in with the writer is so perfect. I just don't think we can really put people at risk and really 
send the wrong message to our community with how careful we have been with this virus. So that, that's my um, viewpoint, but I would love to hear from other members to see what your thoughts are. Um, it's Mary Lynn, sorry. <laughs> they cut off my uh, Alder email with astonishing speed and uh, it took me a while to figure out how to get the link <laughs> to the meeting. Um, and Maeve, I'm trying to remember the discussion. Who are the intended people to come into the fundraiser? Uh, it, we were going to open it up to the public in the evening. It was going to be, you know, people would buy so many, like a ticket. There was a whole different way of how they could do that. And then all day long on Sunday, it would be families. And we were going to have food and beverages on each floor. I mean, we were thinking some of the holes might, like, there might be a certain cheese company that would like to have a special hole, and may we also give out some wonderful cheese along with. So we had grand ideas. And it was just the fact that we're involving that <laughs> um, yeah. kind of behavior and it would not, challenging. We would not be trying to get the golfers or the participants or anybody to come in to the library, right? Correct. It would be just for essentially for community people. Yes. Yeah. As a, okay, because we learned right. last time the golfers and all those folks are simply not, except to Stefano's, they're not going to come into town. So, um, uh, yeah, no, I, um, I would agree. I think it's just too weird right now. Um, I think we probably need another six months to figure out uh, what kind of spikes they're going to be, if any. And it would be sad to do all the preparation and then have to call it off. Kind of my thought. Hey, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, oh and if, uh, Kathy Norman, if I can get the right button. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, if you could turn it back on, yeah, turn it on and then don't touch it again. And then hopefully if I touch this, it'll turn red. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, <laughs> technology here. Um, all right, I'm gonna try again. Yeah, there we are. Okay, all right. Yeah, um, when we looked at doing this last year, what really struck me is that this was gonna be an event that took a lot of um, community participation because each hole was gonna be done by a company, um, not to mention all the volunteers to set it up. And I'm thinking that this year, leading up to that event, the companies are gonna all be trying to figure out what the new normal is. I doubt any of them are going to want to commit to something like this in the state of uncertainty. So yeah, it doesn't seem like a good year to do it. Um, I think we should wait because it, it it sounded nice to tie it in with the Ryder Cup, but it, it'll still have its own legs in a future year. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Chris, Chris had her hand up. Also. Oh, sorry, Chris. I was just going to say that most of the children, 16 and under, are not going to be vaccinated by September either. And since they'll be part of the families coming in, that will present a problem as well. Another good point. Thank you. So uh, anyone else? So Garrett, does this kind of give you uh, a sense of where the board is? And so Kathy and I being the liaison on the foundation, we will also kind of convey these uh, comments uh, to the foundation members when we next meet. Thank you, I appreciate so. it. No, I appreciate the feedback. Okay. <clears throat> uh, moving on then, 3.2, the DPI Inclusive Services Assessment and Guide. And so uh, we did send this out about a week ago and what uh, uh, the step was is that Melissa, Cheryl, and I worked through this long document and took uh, or put uh, documented the the answer to each question to the best of our ability. A few of these questions were uh, could be interpreted multiple ways, I guess. And so uh, my thought was though that we would sort of go through this section by section, just see if people on the board had questions about anything or comments, and then perhaps at the end the board sort of direct us to go back and look at certain sections to see what we should be really looking at. I think um, as part of our strategic plan, Melissa has been leading a, 
a group of staff who um, are working on an operations plan and we do some of this work, but as you can see, as you've, if you've gone through the document, there's a lot more than just the operations. There's a lot that the board does as well and, and so on. So it's kind of a, a wide ranging document. So I thought I would start with governance. Um, as people read through this section, did, did anything strike you um, as, as wrong or something that we should be working on? Yeah. Oh, Nancy. Um, item two, does the library board reflect the demographics of the community? I wondered um, if you could mark that as in progress as you know, new board members are added. It it seems like like that's been a goal, but that it, you could call it in progress. But I'm not I'm not sure how you see that. I think that could be in progress as well. I know Maeve and Mike Vandersteen worked uh, most of last year trying to find uh, people from different demographic groups, and we just weren't having a lot of luck. Mm -hmm. So yeah. certainly that one could be marked in progress, though. So as I said, some of these uh, could be interpreted different ways. Other Thank you. Yeah, you bet, Nancy. Other comments on the governance section? Well, then moving along, we'll go into administration is page eight. Uh, questions or comments on this section? Um. Uh, Jared, if I may. Mm -hmm. Yes, Marcus. Um, sorry, I, I was trying to un, unmute as, as you asked for questions on the previous section. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. because it's 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 governance and it pertains to the, how how the people gathered here today um, deliberate these things. Do we have a plan to get some of these no's to in progress and to yes? Is there what are, what are we doing to uh, bring governance? And, and I think it's germane for us to talk about it because we are named in, in this one, we are the people that uh, are governance. Um, what is our plan to, to get to yes? This is actually our first uh, kick at this whole document, Marco. So we're trying, uh, at this point, I think, based on what our discussion is today, I need to come back with a plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm looking for, I guess, is uh, some direction on what the board sees as the biggest needs based on this wide ranging document. I'm I'm just wondering, um, you know, due to the the length of the document, would it be, you know, helpful for our use of time here if we individually just sort of sent, like, you know, in in each category, like areas that we think need more attention, or would that be more helpful for this, or or there's or perhaps there's a conversation right now which which ones are more glaring that you want to make sure we're paying attention to. And it looks like Meg Elbrink has had her hand up. So go ahead, Meg. I think you ended up where I was was thinking myself, Maeve. Um, I, I wonder if there might be, if we might benefit from getting kind of a, a summary report from the library staff on where areas of strength emerged in this assessment and where areas of question um, and areas of opportunity, uh, you know, rather than going kind of line by line or section by section, I wonder if a summary uh, would be helpful to us to kind of contextualize all of the things that our staff know and are working on in light of, you know, all of these very specific items. I certainly can do that, but then I feel like I'm the student giving myself a grade. So I can, uh, I can come back next month with that, Meg, but um, it would be helpful as well to get feedback from the board just to know okay. wh what you guys think. So I can certainly chime in what uh, the managers think, certainly. Um, I, can I just jump in? This is Melissa. If you go to page 30, there is a scoring rubric that um, summarizes all of the sections. If you kind of want to get that more uh, bird's eye view on how we rank in the different sections rather than line by line. And I think that um, maybe gives us a clearer idea of the areas that particularly need work. 
Okay. okay. Got the. Thank you, Melissa. So when I looked at this um, document, and this was, I think, back in February when you had first shared it, and I know that we all looked at it since, for me, it, it underscored just how much more we need to do. <laughs> um, and then, and then um, it also made me think, too, just like for it, where it says the, the physical de um, design of our library, what that does, too. So um, uh, I, I, I guess from for, for my perspective, um, it, it being able to share with you where we think um, where we think the board needs to work and then also to being able to share our perspective with administration and staffing, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, look, Nancy, yes. Um, would it be helpful if we shared our questions or comments with you, Garrett? Not now, but to help you with uh, the report out? Similar to, you know, when I looked at and and the item that I referred to, mm -hmm. I think it would that be helpful. Sure, sure. Um. Absolutely, and maybe uh, in addition to that, just areas. I mean, you can see on this section one seems to be the weakest area as far as the document goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just giving me any sort of feedback, whether it was a question about how we answered something or whether there was just something that we need to focus on, I think anyone uh, that can give me feedback would be very welcomed. Okay. Uh, looks like Meg Auburn. Thanks, and Melissa, I very much appreciate you guiding us to the summary at the end. I think that's helpful. I think what I'm also thinking about though are like cross-cutting themes, like are we seeing that our language is our policies are good, but our language isn't up to date regardless of which section we're looking at, or are we seeing that our, um, you know, kind of representation is a challenge, you know, so obviously when we look at all of these different categories, those become themes across categories as well as items within categories. So I think that's where I was wondering if even just some general summary from um, the library staff would help us see where areas of opportunity emerged as you completed the document. We'll certainly do that, Meg. I know uh, representation is going to be the big one for us, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll we'll put something in writing for next next meeting. So as far oh, oh Marcos. Marcos, go ahead, Marcos. Oh yeah, thanks everybody. Um, so Garrett, I, I wanna I wanna uh, clarify that I didn't mean to push the work of planning on you, um, uh, especially the governance section, uh, given that we are the governance. Um, I'd like to move to conform an ad hoc committee to deal with that section specifically as a board, uh, lending it the the importance that uh, the governance should have in. Our, our our results and how we move forward. I think that is a, a, a wonderful idea because I was just thinking that, you know, we each have our own perspective on how we're doing with governance, but that's still not the collective knowledge and understanding of our full board. And, you know, we need, we need to know what we each think, you know, because when I look at governance, I just see that we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> and so, um, you know, like for instance, you know, just having things in Braille. I mean, just there are just so many pieces uh, that I hadn't even thought of until I actually looked at this questionnaire. So um, I think that would be an excellent idea. Um, uh, is there anyone, and of course, I'm just assuming that Marcos is interested in this ad hoc <laughs> committee. Uh, would there be any other board member uh, who would be interested? Because uh, we can certainly, uh, put together um, an ad hoc committee to uh, do a little bit more uh, uh, deliberate work on this to be able to work with our administration to find out what where are we now and where do we want to go and then how are we going to get to that end point. So, um, I think that's a fantastic idea, Marcos. 
So, um, and the question I wanted to ask Melissa and Garrett, do you have a uh, particular deadline by which you want to have this completed? You know, because some, is, is, there, is there a certain deadline that we're working towards to get all of this information and this new plan together? There really isn't a, a okay. hard deadline. Um, we're, it's just something we wanted to do last year and we, we got delayed and it is part of our strategic plan as well. So mm -hmm. this was just one of the tools we had to, uh, to move in that direction. So, but no hard deadlines. Great. All right, any other uh, questions or comments? Well, I, th I thought this is a very helpful discussion. If anything, it tells us it's not easy and that, you know, Garrett was, you know, was uh, not going to in five minutes hear from all of us and be able to check it off his list. So that's a good thing. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to spend some good time on uh, this particular uh, topic. So uh, I will get back to all of you on the formation of the ad hoc in committee. And if any of you are interested, you can contact me um, after the meeting. So. Uh, thank you. Anything else? Uh, nope, that's it on that one. Terrific. Uh, then 3.3, .3, COVID service responses. So we do have quite a bit under this uh, agenda item. The first was just uh, staff immunization. So that was a concern. I wanted to thank Maeve for uh, contacting the local health department. <laughs> the library staff were not designated to a certain group, um, even though the CDC had designated library staff as in the same uh, boat, so to speak, as educators and childcare workers. Somehow the state of Wisconsin did not classify us um, however, we did learn that some local health departments were uh, specifically taking library workers and putting them into that group with educators. And Maeve went to the local health department and lobbied as well as uh, talked to Adam Payne. And uh, lo and behold, the next day we were told that we could go get uh, scheduled for immunization. So that was wonderful. Um, since that happened several weeks ago, all of the staff that wanted to get immunized did, to my knowledge. Um, everyone was offered time slots, and I think everyone that wanted one was able to get scheduled. Um, and so we're in really good shape for that. It, to be honest, I think the, uh, the morale did go up slightly because of that. People felt a little bit safer having been immunized. So that was a wonderful thing, and thank you, Maeve. Um, then moving on, we are going through uh, several changes as we do start to reopen services. Um, a few things coming up that you should know of. We are uh, stopping the quarantine of materials um, as the CDC and other uh, health organizations have stated. It's really not a surface um, transmission type of, of uh, virus. It's mostly through the air and the um, DPI has now stated that libraries can again uh, start just going ahead and pushing their materials without a quarantine period. So that we're planning on switching that out on May 3rd, we'll stop quarantining for 24 hours. That should help the materials get circulated a little bit faster. Um, it also helps with the process just of, in the staff's process and making things go faster, a little more efficient. So that's a good thing. Um, we're also looking at uh, opening up newspapers again, that whole surface transmission. When this first went down, we sort of uh, locked down a lot of the, the materials that were people were touching a lot, essentially. So magazines, newspapers, and so on. Newspapers are going to get opened back up on May 3rd as well, so that uh, we do have a, a bunch of diehard newspaper readers that will be super happy when that happens. I've actually got a complaint within the last week on that, asking when we're going to do it. So it's, it's time, I think, um, and people will be excited about that. Um, another piece that we're opening up very soon here within a month is the meeting spaces. Uh, at least the large meeting rooms, we're going to be doing that within uh, the guidelines of six feet and, and a limited number of people within the rooms. So we'll go 25% of uh, what the capacities are will be the maximum. And so, but it, we have gotten requests from groups to start uh, opening up those areas and we, we would like to help them uh, start meeting again. So it will be limited, um, still, still limited, but at least uh, some of those organizations can begin meeting again. Um, and then moving ahead, uh, Melissa's goal for summer, normally, uh, traditionally at Labor Day and at Memorial Day, we change our hours from winter, uh, from summer to winter and winter to summer. And um, on Memorial Day, we were planning on going back to summer hours. We are planning on going back to our normal summer hours. 
uh, after Memorial Day. So that would um, actually bump our hours up a little bit compared to where they are right now. So we'll open slightly earlier and so on, uh, be open a little bit later. And so um, that I think the public will welcome that as well. Um, the last topic is something I wanted to actually have more of a discussion about with the board as, a, as opposed to a report, but with the, the mask issue, obviously at the state level now, there is uh, the Supreme Court of the states struck down the uh, Evers mask mandate. Um, at this point, the city still has a mask mandate for city buildings. However, I do have a concern uh, what would happen if the city went away from that, and I don't, I don't have any indication that they are, but I guess I'd like to have a talk with uh, the trustees about what should I be thinking about um, if, if the city did indeed move away from that, what would be the desire of the trustees? Um, Maeve has already talked to me about uh, children not having, uh, having been immunized, and so that's a big concern of ours, um, having everybody in a building together, especially with uh, a lot of the children that come in that wouldn't be immunized. So I guess I just wanted to open that up and get some feedback um, on how I should act, if uh, what sort of mandate we should do if the city went away with their mask mandate. Uh, it looks like uh, Kathy Norman would like to speak. Yeah, I would. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. It looks like it went oh, off again. There, there we go. Okay. I think for some reason that particular mic is having difficulty. Do you want to go to the mic next? All right. Okay. All right. Should we try again? It says it's red, it red here. And then it, for some reason then it turns off right away. So, um. <laughs> oh. And now, of course, the other one, they're both on for you now. <laughs> yeah. um, I think the CDC guidelines are the, uh, uh, what we should follow, even if the city removes it, because I know that's what a lot of businesses in the area are doing. Um, they're determining when they can remove the mask mandate. It takes it out of the subjectivity and politics and opinions and just follows what the CDC is saying. And right now, of course, they're still saying you should, if you're indoors, you should absolutely be wearing a mask. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to share their thoughts in regards to uh, continuing the mass mandate if the city were to make a decision for um, the, their city buildings, uh, just due to the fact that our building is used by the public in a different manner than the city, uh, the other city buildings. Um, Mary Lynn Donahue. Well, first of all, I would hope that Todd and other administrators uh, would be in touch with you before any decision was made, Garrett. And I would just take the position that you're running the library, they are not, and those are your rules. Um, and I don't think they'll be, there's still many uh, businesses and so forth that really require a mask when you come in. And so I think Kathy's advice about following the CDC guidelines um, you know, which I know can move around a bit, but um, I still think it's just the smart way to go. And I don't see that being a big problem. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, the comment that um, Garrett shared at the beginning, because he and I have been talking about this quite a bit, um, I think just in light of the fact that our the population that comes in our door is a population that does not have a, a vaccine available for them, uh, gives us a different uh, perspective on what rules we need to put in place to keep our staff and our patrons safe. So uh, not all city buildings have, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people coming in every day. And so I think that allows us uh, a little bit of, of a, a difference of opinion of what we need to do. But, uh, but I agree with you, Mary Lynn, that I think the decision that we make, I think will be supported by our city uh, just because they know we have a different population that we're dealing with on a daily basis. So thank you. Does that give you the, 
feedback yes, that you, you need. For okay. The guidance. I appreciate that uh, support. Wonderful. Uh, next, we're moving on right to the director's report, uh, 4.1. So the Wisconsin Association of Public Libraries is a really good conference for uh, talking about programs and facilities management and all the nitty gritty things that uh, public libraries do in the state. They also do have- Maybe we need a microphone. Oh, shoot, ah. my microphone's off again. We are having interesting technical difficulties. It's I'm back on now. Uh, thank you for if you, if pointing you, that out. Thank I didn't you. Even, I'm Mary looking. Lynn. I should be looking for my red lights there. Uh, Mary Lynn, <laughs> you're a pro at this, I'd imagine. If you could start at the beginning. Yes. Here, sorry. Um, <laughs> so the Wisconsin Association of Public Libraries will be meeting on May 4th through the 7th in a couple of weeks here. Um, it's a super good conference for talking about uh, operations in libraries, but as well as there are uh, trustee discussions that would be beneficial to trustees. And so I just wanted to make you aware, if you go to wisconsinlibraries.org and then click on events and conferences and then the WAPL, it's called WAPL Conference, um, you can take a look at the, uh, the schedule. It's about 115, it's $115 for, it's about three and a half day long conference. Obviously you don't have to attend the whole thing, but um, for anyone that's interested, we do have, uh, some money set aside and certainly trustees would be welcome to sit in on that conference. I think it's uh, a really good conference since it's all focused for public libraries. Um, so I would just say uh, go to the website, take a look at it. And if you're interested in attending, um, let myself or maybe Debbie D'Amico know and we'll uh, try to get you signed up. Thank you. The uh, next thing on the agenda, uh, 4.2, we're gonna turn that over to Melissa to talk about services and programming. Hi everyone, this is Melissa. Um, I just wanted to mention too, in regards to the WAPL conference that Eric Kleinenberg is one of the keynote speakers. Um, uh, if you recall, he's the one who wrote Palaces for the People that we read as a group last, was that last year or two years ago? I don't know, 2020 is a blur. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that should be super interesting. Um, so Melissa, real quick, Melissa, some program updates. I'm sorry, I was just going to say as well, Cheryl, our own Cheryl Nesman will be speaking at uh, uh, one of the speakers at the conference. Oh. She'll be uh, presenting on the bed bug room <laughs> and talking about, it's, it's really, no one has done anything like that. So that was uh, a brilliant idea on her part to cut down on the processing. So with that, I'm sorry, Melissa. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Um, so program updates, uh, we continue to have really great success with our virtual programs and take home kits. Um, those just go out really fast, um, faster than we can even keep up with. And then um, to highlight a couple of um, really successful programs, Wintergreen, which um, you might be familiar with. We've been doing that for, I think, four years now. Um, as a seasonal transition from winter to spring, we do, um, a full day of programs around um, planning your garden, um, upcycling, uh, cooking, all that, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and it's a really well-loved program. We have a lot of community partners as well as community members that really look forward to it. So we decided to try it virtual this year and it was very successful. We had over 800 participants um, it, throughout the various um, virtual workshops that we hosted, which is pretty incredible. Uh, the only one who gets that kind, those kind of numbers is Little Rev um, for our other virtual programs. So that's pretty exciting. And then I just wanted to mention too that um, there's a new statewide committee that has just been formed through wills, and that is the Wisconsin Library Service. Um, the committee is called the City Library Collective and that is um, any single municipal libraries that serve a population of between 30 and 100,000 people. Um, and that includes Sheboygan, Manitowoc, Appleton, Fond du Lac, Oshkosh, Beloit, Racine, Kenosha, Superior, La Crosse, and Eau Claire. And uh, they had their first meeting earlier this month. And really what it, the, it's designed to do is kind of share ideas um, and work through collective problems together. The kinds of things that libraries like us face are often not the same thing that um, the libraries 
like in our systems phase. So these are also um, mostly resource libraries where like us in the Monarch system, we're significantly larger than the other libraries. So it's really hard to um, collaborate when the services we're providing and the issues we're facing are just so different. So this helps us kind of manage that and, and find ideas from other libraries that are facing the same issues that we are. So we had a really productive first meeting where we decided that our initial focus would be to um, go after some of the ARPA money um, in the form of a grant that um, is framed around libraries as community recovery centers post pandemic. Um, and this is actually based on a grant that Milwaukee Public Library wrote um, in an attempt to get some CARES Act funding. They ultimately did not get the grant, but um, the grant that they wrote is fantastic. So we're basing the initial project off of that. Um, and the idea is, is we're going to try to, as a group, agree on three areas to focus on um, for the grant funding. And then individual libraries can add additional areas of focus onto that. So um, just to give you an idea of the direction it's moving in, um, and this has been sort of led by the director in Kenosha. Um, so one thing would be getting kids back on track academically and socially after the traumatic school year that they've had, um, fighting disinformation um, and um, community reconciliation through um, social justice and community engagement activities. Um, but there's also some ideas for um, including like designing for a flexible future, uh, basically planning for the next pandemic um, and, and other disasters that will be coming our way. So, so moving towards a model of uh, community resilience as opposed to just traditional disaster planning. Um, if that makes sense, and the, and the piece that libraries play um, in doing that for communities. So I'll certainly be updating the board as this, this group continues and let you know what the progress is, but um, it's really exciting, I think, and, and um, a great opportunity for, for Mead and for um, Wisconsin libraries in general. So unless there's questions, those are my updates. Now that sounds uh, very, very interesting, and I can only imagine the number of ideas that are be coming from all those different types of resource libraries. A really great idea that everyone's getting together on these topics. So I'll continue with the director's report on 4.3. Uh, Cheryl Nesman's not able to attend today. However, uh, the big thing that her staff, the shelving group, is working on is really changing up their processes now. They've got, uh, as I said, the quarantine period will be going away. Um, they are working on, there's an issue right now with our, with our uh, computer system with notifications. We still want to uh, put the materials into that heated room for a period, but what happens when, a, when the material comes in and is checked in on our sorter, there's an automatic notification that goes out. And so patrons are expecting their stuff to be on the shelf as soon as that notification comes out. And unfortunately, we want to take that time to heat the books up. So there's uh, some work that Cheryl's really trying to get done in that area. Um, and with the quarantine changing as well, uh, we're just trying to work through some, some process changes. So that's really what she's been spending some time on lately. Um, update on building projects. Uh, this is Greg Herr, one of my staff's area. So uh, he's got a list of things when you go into board docs and you click on that particular agenda item, there's a list of a dozen or so items. Um, we've been uh, making it through quite a few of the projects. The big one uh, this last week that was completed was, as you can see, for those folks that have come to the library in the last week, we've got a new steel fence on the, um, it would be the northwest as well as the southwest corners of the building. And so Maeve has been on me for a couple of years to cover up that ugly generator, beautiful generator really from Kohler, but um, we do have a fence around that now, as well as towards the back of the library, there's a heat grate um, that is also been covered up with a fence now too. So that's in the loading dock area. Um, so both of those projects are done. And speaking of Earth Day, I have one other one that we want to talk about that I haven't talked about before, which is uh, our maintenance staff has been slowly um, 
changing us over the whole building to LED lighting. And so they are about 75% of the way through on that project. In fact, we have a whole slew of, of light bulbs that we're tr trying to figure out what to, what's the least costly way to, to get rid of those. Um, but they have been working through this huge project. You can imagine we have an 88,000 square foot building. There's a lot of light bulbs to go through. And so um, they've been really working on that project. So it's exciting to see that almost coming to the end as well. So that hopefully saves us some money as well as uh, it does our part for Earth Day. So. Um, and then the next or last item would be the monthly statistics. And on that, um, as I was thinking about looking at these statistics, so there's still obviously several that are way down. Um, this is going to be the transmission transition month now where last year was about the year that, or this part of the year was about the time we shut down. Mm -hmm. And we were actually shut down all the way for a number of weeks. And so I would expect as now the year starts to uh, drag on, we're going to see these numbers start to go up in certain areas, such as library visits, internet usage, and, and our physical checkout of items. All those, all those should start to go up now that we've been uh, opened back up and, and last year we were closed down. So that's a good thing. Um, there's still going to be some that we're really not doing much of right now. We're not doing a lot of programs. Um, we're not going to be using the study rooms at this time yet. We're still working through that. And, and Sydney is really not recruiting volunteers at this time. We're still uh, working under the premise that we don't want to bring in a lot of people into the library. So some of these will stay sort of slow, but uh, some of the things are opening up a little bit. So um, start to, should, we should start to see those numbers start to go up again. Great. Any uh, questions or comments for Garrett? All right, uh, thank you for the report. Uh, moving on then to 5.1, uh, Nancy Manchin, uh, any updates from the Monarch Library System? The, uh, the executive director, Kimberly Young, resigned uh, from her position and um, the um, this job description is out and we'll be receiving applications um, until I, I think it's May 8th. So hopefully in summertime there will be, that position will be filled. Staff is helping out as they've done before to keep, keep things going. And uh, the committees of uh, the Monarch system are at work uh, looking at their policies and employee handbook to update and revise as needed. So that's it from the library, the Monarch system right now. Great, uh, thank you for that update. Uh, do you know if the Monarch system is using uh, a search firm for the, for the new? Yes, um, the executive board uh, did decide to um, hire a search uh, firm for that position. Terrific. Um, I know that they were thinking about it because uh, they were. They, I had received a call from one of the board members to find out um, uh, about the firm that we utilized to, to search for our library director. So, thank you. Yeah, good. And actually, Maeve, it is the same firm. It's the same firm. Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. Good to know. Yeah. I, th I think we're kind of happy with our library director. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Terrific. All right, thank you for that update. Um, the Mead Library Foundation, I'm going to turn this over to Kathy. Okay, um, the foundation board is moving to an every other month meeting, um, which is going to, a step in the right direction. We've had a strange schedule. We used to be every month, then we went to sort of on again, off again in the summer. Now we're trying to get into a new groove um, every other month. The last time we met, we spent a lot of time talking about whether the normal activities that the foundation usually does are going to happen this year. And there are things like the author visit that we'd scheduled and called off, the Renaissance Society Gala in December, um, and I don't think we've reached any dis definitive decisions on all of that. Um, the, the investments that the foundation are managing, both for the... Uh, endowment of the foundation as well as the library board, the former 850 funds are doing well. That's one of our main functions is managing that money. So the funds are available when the library needs something special or something extra beyond its normal budget amount. 
Um, and the, the strategic planning committee, or I should say the um, public affairs committee is meeting to discuss how to better market the library through the foundation um, channel, whether it's through their own website, rather just a link from the library board or the library website. Um, and John Donovan seems to be kind of spearheading that um, discussion and that endeavor. So there will, we'll be doing some work on um, our website presence. And that's all. Great. Thank you for that update. Uh, and then uh, the Friends of uh, Mead Public Library. I'm hoping that Sydney will be able to give us an update. I hope so too. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, so the friends met yesterday. Um, they are working towards um, a couple of different events later on in the year. Um, nothing real concrete yet, but they're really hoping to kind of uh, get more of a social gathering together for the friends members. Um, so we're looking at a couple of different things there. Um, the friends executive committee did meet and put together actually um, kind of dovetailing off of the foundation's thankathon that they did uh, that last month. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they put together a thank you letter um, for all of the friends members, um, which they sent out and was very well received. Um, we just had our book sale last week, our annual book sale. And the book sale brought in $3,314.80 which is awesome. It is um, the fourth largest sale amount since the record was started in 2006, which yes. is awesome. Wow. Lastly, um, the friends do a spring campaign to support the summer library program called The Gift of Reading. Um, and those letters went out um, in early April as well, um, which also has done phenomenally this year where the, the letters are still coming in um, but we have so far $3,680. And I believe, uh, Debbie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Friends pledge 2500 every year. So we're well over that mark, which is really nice. And that's all I got. If I could jump in, Maeve, I just wanted to say that it was the, the Friends book sale was incredible. It seemed like it was back to old times pre-COVID, and uh, we had way more people than we expected. Mm. Also wanted to thank the Friends for prior to that, they had, they call it a garage sale, but they helped the library get rid of old equipment that we can't find other buyers for. So they opened up the Roco room and um, sold some desks and file cabinets and that sort of a thing. And and they really helped us uh, start to clear out um, some of our areas that need to be cleared out. We have a lot of stuff sitting around when we had uh, brought in new office equipment and office furniture and so on. And that, that really helped us uh, to get rid of some of this stuff. So thanks to the friends. And if I could just echo uh, what Garrett just said, Sydney, if you could please convey to the friends how much we appreciate their hard work it is amazing to me that they made over $3,000 in a book sale where the books cost 10 cents mm. or 25 cents. Mm. So it is just astonishing. And um, I do know that there were some lovely uh, donations from uh, the collection of Bernie Markovich because several friends mm. of mine said that they were, were lucky to, to get one of his lovely books with his name inside. <laughs> so it was a, a really uh, wonderful, uh, event that was put together it was so safe the, the way you orchestrated people in and out and just it was just as as Garrett said it felt like old times but it was done in such a safe manner and yet they still made incredible amounts of money uh, for uh, their annual event so thank them I will do that thank you um, and uh, before I get to the, the last item, which is the upcoming meetings, which will be in uh, May, I just wanted all of us to sort of give a round of applause to Mary Lynn Donahue, who will no longer be our liaison. She has been our liaison for several years, and after nine years on Common Council, of which she would be sitting up here, <laughs> Uh, she has given such an incredible service to our city and to our library. And so if you could just join me in a round of applause, no matter where you are in which room around the city. So 
So, uh, and I did tell her that I would like for her to come back next month for a resolution that, you know, uh, will remain secret until then. So, uh, hope we get to see her again. So at this time, would, uh, our next meeting is May 27th. At this time, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Been moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I can already tell.